but once you encounter it, you automatically recall it. How can this be reckoned? Who could keep this book straight? Who keeps track of this? This proves that although you have temporarily forgotten about it, your eighth consciousness remembers. That's why when you see the thing, you remember. There isn't really anyone keeping track. It's the naturally stored in the eighth consciousness. Sutra, Ananda, you should know that this state of clarity is not real. It is like rapidly flowing water that appears to be still on the surface. Due to its speed, you cannot perceive the flow, but that does not mean it is not flowing. If this were not the source of thinking, then how could one be subject to false habits? Commentary Ananda, you should know that this state of clarity is not real, and still, uh, that still an unmoving place described above is not really still after all. Why not? It is like rapidly flowing water that appears to be still on the surface. When you look at it, it seems to have no waves and no current. Due to its speed, you cannot perceive the flow, but that does not mean it is not flowing. Since there are no waves, you cannot see the water is flowing, but that doesn't mean that there's no flow. It's flowing, but you cannot see it because there are no waves. Earlier, we discussed the formation skanda. Now we are discussing the consciousness skanda. If this were not the source of thinking, then how could one be subject to false habits? If there were no false thoughts in the consciousness skanda, then it would not be influenced and permitted by false habits. So try, if you do not open and unite your six sense faculties so that they function interchangeably, this false thinking will never cease. Commentary, if you do not achieve the state where you can open and unite your six sense faculties so that they function interchangeably, if you have not reached a level of cultivation, this false thinking will never cease unless you attain the state in which you can use your six sense faculties interchangeably. This false thinking will not go away. Sutra, that's why your seeing, hearing, awareness, and knowing are presently strung together by subtle habits, so that within the profound clarity, existence and non-existence are both unreal. This is a fifth kind of upside-down, minutely subtle thinking. Commentary, that's why your seeing, hearing, awareness, and knowing are presently strung together by subtle habits. The functions of your sixth sense faculty, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, tactile awareness, and knowing are strung together by subtle habits, like um, beads on a string. These habits are extremely subtle and hard to detect, so that within the still, Profound clarity of your nature, existence and non-existence are both unreal. You may maintain that they exist, but they do not really exist. You may claim they don't exist, yet they do exist. This kind of intangible situation is a state of the fifth kind of upside-down, minutely subtle thinking. This kind of false thinking is also very subtle and difficult to detect. Sutra, Ananda, these five skandhas of reception develop the five kinds of false thinking. Commentary, Ananda, these five kinds of skandhas of reception, form, feeling, thinking, formations, and consciousness develop with the five kinds of false thinking. So these five kinds of false thinking are also produced. Sutra, you also wanted to know the depth and scope of each realm. Form and emptiness are the boundaries of form. Contact and separation are the boundaries of feeling. Remembering and forgetting are the boundaries of thinking. Destruction and production are the boundaries of formations. Deep purity, answering to unite with the deep purity, belongs to the boundaries of consciousness. Commentary. You also wanted to know the depth and scope of each realm. You wanted to know whether the realm of each skanda was shallow or deep. What are they like? 
Where are their boundaries? I will tell you now. Form and emptiness are the boundaries of form. Form and emptiness are relative to each other and they are the boundaries of form. Contact with and separation from the objects of touch are the boundaries of feeling. Remembering and forgetting are the boundaries of thinking. Destruction and production are the boundaries of formations. Deep purity entering to unite with the deep purity belongs to the boundaries of consciousness. Purity unites with purity and that forms the realm of the eighth consciousness. Sutra at their source, these five skandhas arise in layers. Their arising is due to consciousness, while their cessation begins with the elimination of form. Commentary at their source, these five skandhas arise in layers. The five skandhas are produced in layers. There is a mutual cycle and they aid one another. Their arising is due to consciousness, while their cessation begins with the elimination of form. How does cessation happen? Once the form is gone, then the skandhas will become empty. They arise from consciousness and their cessation begins when form is eliminated. Sutra, you may have a sudden awakening to the principle at which you point. They all simultaneously vanish. But in terms of the specifics, they are eliminated not all at once but in sequence. Commentary, you may have sudden awakening to the principle at which point they all simultaneously vanish. You understand the principle very clearly. Once you have awakened, the methods of cultivation you have used cease to exist. And the notion of awakening is also gone. If you understand the principle, then even the idea of awakening is gone. But in terms of the specifics, they are eliminated not all at once, but in sequence. On the nominal level, you have become enlightened. But at the level of phenomena, elimination takes place in sequence. It's like a taking off clothing. You have to first take off the first layer, and then the second layer, third layer, the fourth layer, the fifth layer. In terms of specifics, you have to eliminate them in sequence. Having understood the principle, you still have to cultivate at a practical level. Only through actual cultivation, you can you break through all five skandhas. January 1983 Earlier, one of my disciples commented that five layers of clothing is not a very apt analogy for the five skandhas because the Heart Sutra says, he illuminated the five skandhas and saw that they are all empty and they crossed beyond all suffering and difficulty. If they were like five layers of clothing, then when all the layers were peeled away, the person would be naked. So his comment that this would cause people to have false thoughts is true enough. Before the five skandhas have been broken through, the person is still covered by the five layers of clothing and people don't have so many false thoughts. Once the skandhas are broken through and the person is naked, oh no. So the analogy is slightly problematic. No wonder you said it caused you had to have false thoughts. What do you think should be done? Can you offer another explanation? The five layers of clothing are visible, while the five skandhas are invisible. The visible and the, the invisible are different. The five skandhas are merely a kind of in energy, and it can also become young energy. Jin demons can become young demons. It all depends on whether or not you know how to use them. If you know, then you won't be turned by them, and the state isn't a bad one. If you are greedy for spiritual powers, advantages, or costes, then you've been turned by them. The five skandhas, also known as the five yin, are five kinds of yin energy. It's because of the yin energy that you come under demonic possession. Yang energy makes a person a bodhisattva. However, the important thing is to get attached. When you have no attachments, then 
you wear clothes all day and you and yet you haven't put on a thread you eat all day and yet you haven't consumed a grain of rice you aren't a test to whether you are wearing clothes or not people who truly cultivate have no attachment to such matters it's not necessarily a matter of taking off five layers of clothing because what will you do when you're not wearing anything This is just a very simple analogy that I gave because I was worried that you might not understand. In reality, it's just a mass of energy acting up. This energy can be proper or devin. Devin energy means yin energy, and proper energy means yang energy. If you don't know how to use it, then it turns it into a yin demon. If you do know how to use it, then it becomes a yang demon. At this point, You should neither think of good nor think of bad. Don't crave a good state and don't be afraid of bad states. When you encounter a state, just act as if it didn't exist. Don't get attached to it. I know that my disciple doesn't want to take off his five layers of clothing because he'd feel embarrassed if he did. Sutra, I have already shown you the knots tied in the kapasa cloth. What is it that you do not understand that causes you to ask about it again? Commentary. I have already shown you the knots tied in the copper sack cloth. I tied six knots in the cloth. What is it that you do not understand that causes you to ask about it again? Why is it that you still don't understand? Why are you asking me about it all over again? You are belaboring the point. So try, you should gain a thorough, a thorough understanding of the origin of this false thinking and then transmit your understanding to cultivators in the future Dharma and the age. Let them recognize this falseness and naturally give rise to deep disdain for it. Let them know of Nirvana so that they will not linger in the cheaper realm. Commentary Ananda, you should find and gain a thorough understanding of the origin of this false thinking and then transmit your understanding to cultivators in the future and in age. Enable all living beings to thoroughly understand this principle. Transmit this principle to those in the Dharma ending age. Let them recognize this falseness and naturally give rise to deep disdain for it. Cause all those cultivators to know that The falseness of false thinking comes from themselves. Let them clearly understand this false and pattern, so that they become disgusted with it. Let them know of nirvana. When living beings know that they are capable of realizing nirvana, they will not want to linger in the triple realm. They will not wish to remain in the burning house of the three realms, the desire realm, the form realm, and the formless realm. There's no peace in the three realms. They are like a house on fire. Great Master Lian Chu, Lotus Pond, was uh, an imminent Dharma master in China. After he had left the home life, he was always thinking about going home to see his wife. He did, in fact, go back again and again to see her. His wife was a very intelligent person, however, and she thought over the situation. Her husband had left home, but he wasn't cultivating. He still held on emotional love and could not put it down. He kept coming home, and that really wasn't the way to do it. So she dug a big pit right in front of the door to her house and covered it with a mud. Inside the pit, he built a small fire. The next time Great Master Lan Chu came back home, He stepped into the trap and fell into the burning pit. What are you doing? Building a pit of fire right here, he cried. His wife replied, If you know it's a pit of fire, why do you keep coming back? Hearing that one sentence, he became enlightened and never went home again. That illustrates the saying, There is no peace in the three realms. They are like a house on fire. The desire realm, the form realm, and the formless realm are not pleasant or safe places. Rather, they are like a burning house.